Great, don't look at the projector, that's a really bad picture of mine, please. But, um, and I would like to say that Amani stole my speech. Now, there are certain parts that I'm talking um, in my speech that refer to Amani's speech, The Art of Giving. So, let me start now. So I was about nine years old when my parents first took me to a circus on the outskirts of Delhi, and I was absolutely fascinated. I was thrilled to see so many gymnasts, acrobats, um, performance perform with an unparalleled flexibility. But my absolute favorite of all the acts was the tightrope um, tight act. Um, and I could not believe my eyes when I saw the gymnasts perform the tightrope um, with an exceptional sense of balance. Now, let's fast forward seven years. Um, to my 10th grade biochemistry class, again, referring back to diffusion. So, when molecules have a tendency to move when dissolved in a solution, and so they bring equal distribution. So, if you dissolve a spoonful of salt in water, the individual salt molecules will move from higher concentration to lower concentration. But you guys might be wondering, why am I talking about all this? What's the point? Circus, diffusion, how does this all make sense together? Well, this all connects at one point, this idea of a balance, an equilibrium. Don't you think that this balance inhabits every aspect of nature? You see symmetrical patterns um, across flowers and butterflies, and then they're balancing mathematical equations. But, so does it not seem so that balance inhabits every aspect of humanity? Well, it doesn't. Because if it did, the reality would be different. So far we've talked a lot about um, the logical stuff, the science stuff, how science concepts would behave in an ideal situation. Now, let's talk about some practical theory. Some world so here, grade 10, thank you to Mr. Reshke. Um, the Lorenz curve. So, if I were to take all the people in Kenya and divide them into five groups, ranging from the poorest 20% to the richest 20%, and if I were to place a bucket in front of every group and fill that bucket with a certain share of wealth, then how much wealth do you think each group would have? Are there any guesses? How much wealth would the least, the poorest 20% would get? Are there any guesses? About right. The lowest 20% get 4.8% of the income. They deserve, being 20% of the population, they deserve a fair 20% of the wealth as well. But unfortunately, they don't get it. The richest 20%, the richest 20% get 54% of the total wealth. How is this fair? And this is not just Kenya. Inequality, economic inequality inhabits global, the global scale. On the global scale in the world, the richest 20% have 83% of all the wealth. And the poorest 20% in the world have less than 1% of the total income. Even worse, this is just a part of the inequality on, in a wide spectrum of inequalities which inhabit every aspect of humanity, whether it be in terms of gender, education, race, ethnicity, opportunities. Inequality inhabits every aspect of humanity. So what do we do? Well, I'm sure we sympathize with the issue. We create long reports filled with heart-wrenching numbers and um, big statistics, and even read those reports just so that we could say a word or two when it comes to a debate or discussion at school. But we have become just so preoccupied with our lives. Humans, in this ever-changing dynamic world of ours, humans want the best of everything. We want ideal grades, we want to get to ideal universities, we want to get an ideal job, we want to make sure that we settle in in an ideal family. But we forget to look at the bigger picture. What is life about? 
So let's define life. Well, in this um, world, which is which is filled with a sort of race to get to the first, humans have built. Okay, it's been half a century since humans first reached the moon, and now we our recent efforts have been towards colonizing moon. But what's the point? What's the point? when there are still millions of refugees here on Earth who are still displaced, who don't have a home? What's the point when there are thousands of African-American death row prisoners being discriminated against in some of the strongest countries in the world? What's the point when millions of girls are still denied their basic right to education? Well, there, these are things which have plagued my mind. Um, I come from a Hindu background, and there are certain values that I've grown up with. The Hindu, te the Hindu teachings, the gurus, they emphasize our need to devote some time to the society so that we can serve the society in a selfless manner. The word dan, which literally means to donate, holds more than just the meaning. It means to selflessly um, physically, intellectually, and spiritually involved in a sort of service. Because the Hindu philosophical texts point to the fact that it's not the money which gives us happiness. It's the peace comes from our ability to give back to the society. And I've been adhering to some of these goals. I've been at ISK for about four years now, and I'm absolutely grateful to ISK for the opportunities that it has given me. For me to be able to reflect back, to be able to give back. So I've been associated with Children's Garden Home, which is a service at ISK. It's an orphanage in Kenya, which houses more than 400 orphans and provides for their education and food. And I've been associated with them since ninth grade. But my original intention to visit them was to get my CAS credits for a ninth grade first semester. Congratulations, Chica. But um, later on, I realized that true service is not just going there and working with the children. It comes from a sense of integrity. And so um, I, I've been working with them. I have come to form great relations with the children at Children's Garden Home. I've come to know about their way of life, and I've been jealous. I've been jealous as to why they're so happy. They find, they find their happiness in such small, insignificant things that I take for granted. And that is when I realized the true joy of giving. I felt happier myself when I was able to bring, when I was able to make somebody else smile. I felt more learned myself when I was able to share my knowledge with somebody else. So, yes, um, I ended up spending the whole of summer after ninth grade with Children's Garden Home, teaching them two months of maths and computers, and I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I was able to contribute to them. I was able to make my part in life. I was able to balance my life um, by giving back to the society. So, yes, I've been privileged. I've been privileged being given the opportunity to work for my own progress. I've been privileged being given the freedom to make my own decisions and explore my sense of identity. But most importantly, I've been privileged. I've been privileged being able to truly understand what it means to be privileged. So, yes, we have to redefine our life. What is life today? Well, life is about balancing. It's about giving back. Um, and so I aspire for a world where our goals aren't just about personal development. We're meeting the deadlines. We're exceeding those profit margins. I aspire a life where everybody feels that it's their obligation, their duty, to help the less privileged ones. And so life is about being fair. Being fair and keeping a balance, not only for yourself, but for the ones around you. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Benji.